Hey, it's Daniel from Consensus. And in this video, we're going to be going into detail on how Deep Search works. Now, Deep Search is our new most powerful feature that lets you do a mini literature review in minutes. So let's hop into the product and run a question. But before we do, make sure to hit like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the new features that we're releasing at Consensus. So here we are in Consensus. And to do a Deep Search, the first thing I want to do is click on the drop down here, click on Deep. And now I'm going to go ahead and ask my question. So the question I want to know is, I want to understand the environmental benefits, challenges, and costs across different types of renewable energy. And I want Deep Search to actually go and make a table so I can quickly get an overview of this. So let's go ahead and hit run. So what you can see here is the first thing that Deep Search is doing is it runs the search on your initial question. Now from there, it's going to analyze the findings and it's create a customized search strategy in which it can ask multiple different questions that are related to your topic, collect the papers from it, and then give you a deep overview of what all of that literature says. So you can see here, it's doing a couple of things. So the first off is, is define the strategy. And each of these different parts are parts of that strategy. So you can see here, it's going to explore adjacent topics. Over here, it's going to rephrase the question for different terminology to make sure I get the widest breadth of papers related to my topic, and a couple other core points, zooming in on energy types, interdisciplinary perspectives, and more. Now, what's really cool is in each of these steps, you can see what's actually happening behind the scenes. So you can see that right here, Consensus is going to gather broad studies on various renewable energies and then organize them before refining them. In foundational frameworks, you can see that Consensus is running three independent questions and collecting all the information around them. So it's looking at foundational models, theoretical frameworks, and comparative analysis to be the base of its search strategy. It's also gone ahead and applied its own filter to the searches. So in this case, it's looking at papers that have over 10 citations, so we know that they're highly reputable frameworks. Now, each of these numbers here shows you how many searches Consensus did within this step of its research process, how many filters it applied, and how many new papers it's found that it's added to its pool of overall papers that it's going to analyze. Every time it does a search strategy, you can see here on the top here, how many more papers it's identified, how many it's screened, how many is determined to be eligible based on semantic relevance. And then finally, at the end, it's going to be able to whittle those down to a top 50 that are most relevant that it's going to include in the answer. You can also see on the left-hand side here, all of the new papers that it finds are being added to our overall list. So we can save those, export them to a reference manager, or just go ahead and actually look through them ourselves. Now let's skip ahead a bit to when this search is completed and then we'll actually look at some of the final results. Okay, great. So you can see that it's done the search strategy over here and it's on the final step of actually ranking the papers. So it's found 812 papers that are screened and it's looking at factors like influence, recency, strength of evidence and overall research quality to determine the top 50 to include in the answer. So this entire process was based off of interviews we've done with researchers on how they're actually going through and building their search strategies. Now that it's done analyzing, you can see that it's going ahead and formulating the answer that we requested with all of the connections to the sources that we've made. So the answer now is finished rendering, and we're going to go through it part by part. Now you'll notice that we asked it to create a table comparing the environmental benefits. And so right up top, I've got that table that I'm looking for with all the different renewable energy types, their benefits, their key challenges, their typical costs, as well as notable drawbacks. And each of these rows is connected to specific references here that I can go ahead and see. Now, on the top here, you'll see a number 38. This is the number of sources that was actually included in the answer and directly referenced. So you consider this a reference list for the actual answer itself. So if I click on this, I can see all 38 of those papers at once. I can export them to my reference manager. I can save them into consensus in a list or I can go ahead and actually click and explore them. In the answer itself, there's a couple of parts. So up top here is the table that I requested. This might be text if you didn't ask for a table. If I scroll down, you'll see that I get into the actual deep search report itself. And typically this is how it will be structured. The top part here will be the command that you've given it. And the rest of it will be the deep search report, which is an overview of all of those papers. So you can see here that any of the statements that it's making are backed by sources. And you can see that it's using up to 50 sources here that it's referencing. The reports also include a consensus meter. So within the question, consensus determines is there a yes or no question that's related to the question you've asked, and also does a consensus search on there, giving you a breakdown of a yes, no question in here. 
If I click on the expand, I can see the papers that were referenced. Yes, possibly and mixed or no. And I can also go ahead and hit filter here. And this will allow me to actually just filter all the papers that show up at the bottom of the report in favor or against it. Now, in the method section, this is walking through how it actually went about finding the papers and determining the answer here. It says that we conducted a search across 170 million papers, including Semantic Scholar and PubMed. We found 1,048 papers. And then we have a Prisma inspired diagram below that's showing us how many papers were identified, screened, how many were eligible, and then how many were finally included within this answer. If I click on details here, it's just going to open up the search strategy. So you can go ahead and explain what specific questions were asked to consensus, what filters were used, and what was the overall search strategy that was determined in this answer. If I can continue to go down in the results section, I can see a different, a couple different breakdowns here. And we enter our first consensus generated table, which is key papers. Now, this gives you an overview of highly cited papers that consensus found to be relevant to the question that you've asked or it found within the search strategy. It gives you a quick overview of the papers, methodology, energy depth compared, key result, cost data, to give you a really brief overview of what are the most cited papers saying about your question. Underneath that, we also have a top contributors section. This is going to show you which authors have contributed most to the papers that consensus found to be relevant to your question in its deep search. And finally, underneath the discussion section, we have a claims and evidence table. Now, this finds claims from the articles, gives them a strength score based on how many papers actually cited them, and gives you access to those papers as well. So you can see for this claim, it considered it to be strong compared to some others that it considered to be moderate, and you can see which papers it actually referenced in this. The last table that is very valuable here is the research gaps matrix. Now, this gives you a combination of basically what was studied and how many papers studied it. So of the papers that I looked at, 12 of them were a life cycle now assessment for solar, 10 were a cost analysis for solar, and you can see so on and so forth. It also shows you where there's gaps. So specifically where no papers actually covered. As you can see here in end of life management, there are two gaps that I found for geothermal and hybrid systems. So this is likely where there is a research gap. So if you're looking to do more research, research projects, or find something where you can actually shed more light or contribute back to the scientific community, these are good places to start as they likely don't have a lot of relevant papers that directly address any claims regarding to the gaps. And finally, Consensus proposes a number of other follow-up questions that you can go ahead, click on, and actually do a follow-up search with to get more information. Now, if you head down to the results section, you can actually see all of the papers that consensus found. So these numbers are ranked in order of how relevant it was to your question. You can see if I hover over them in regards to the question where the paper leans. And finally, if I scroll all the way down here and I hit load more results, once I go past 50, it's going to show me the rest of the papers that I determined to be relevant. So you can see here, the number stops at 50. So this is the last one that was included in the analysis, but I can keep scrolling down and see all of the papers that consensus found in its search. So there should be almost 800 papers in here, or depending on however many were screened. So right back up to the top, when I click on this, we can see that 812 were eligible. So I can get up to 812 papers in that list at the bottom. Now you can also start asking follow-up questions. For example, can you create a table just comparing solar and wind costs? And now this is going to use all of the information that consensus gathered from the previous question, your deep search, and it's going to do a follow-up session question, and I can choose what level of search I want the follow-up question to be. So typically what we see is that researchers will do a deep search to get a broad section over an area, and then they're going to follow it up with multiple pro searches to give a deeper dive into very specific areas that they want to understand. And so in this case, you can see that we just did a comparison of solar and wind costs, and I got a lot more information than what was given to me on the deep search since it was looking at a wide breadth of different renewable types. So this is a great way to be able to make the best use of your consensus search credits, starting off with a deep search on a topic and then going down into specific areas that you want to dive deeper on and potentially find new or more related papers to. So that's it for the overview of how deep search works. If you have any feedback, please let us know. You can always hit the support chat at the bottom here and submit a ticket to our support team. We read all of those and feedback is extremely helpful. 
Now, in the next videos, we're going to dive into specific visualizations. So we're going to be looking at the research gaps matrix, the claims table, as well as the key authors table to give you a bit more insight into how those are formed.